In this example, we'll create a new project using the Project Wizard of SoundStructure Studio. To ensure you have the latest version of SoundStructure Studio, check polycon.com for the latest updates. Once you start SoundStructure Studio, the application will appear and show you different menu options. As an example of how to use SoundStructure Studio, let's create a project with eight analog table microphones, an HDX video codec, an analog PSTN interface, and stereo program audio, and finally a stereo audio amplifier. To start this example, from the File menu, we'll select New Project, which will start the design process with step one of four, selecting the inputs of the system. What you will see is there are a number of different styles of inputs to choose from. The reason these different types of inputs are here is to allow SoundStructure Studio to automatically create a baseline configuration with microphones routed to video codecs, video codecs routed to amplifiers, the echo cancer references set up properly, and more. The default audio settings and matrix routings that are created are based on the types of channels that you have selected. These settings, including gains and matrix routings, can also be easily changed after the project has been created. There are different styles of microphones that can be selected, including traditional analog ceiling microphones, analog lectern microphones, analog boundary table microphones, and analog wireless microphones. The differences between these microphone choices has to do with the amount of gain applied to each different style, a default name, and also whether phantom power should be enabled for that microphone type or not. For example, wireless microphones don't require phantom power because the outputs from the wireless receiver will be connected to the sound structure device and the receiver is powered. In addition to the analog microphones, there are two styles of HDX digital microphones, the HDX ceiling micro arrays and the HDX table microphone arrays. These microphones will be the subject of another example. Once the type of microphone required in the design is known, you can change the quantity and select Add. In this case, I've selected eight tabletop microphones and have left the name, the default name of table mic. Once the microphones are added to the system, SoundStructure Studio will number the microphones sequentially. You can use any name you'd like. We suggest the name be both meaningful and useful because as we'll see, the names will be used by an external control system to make adjustments, including muting or adjusting volume. Next, I'll select a stereo program audio source. There are two choices for the type of program audio inputs, including mono and stereo, that assume that the signal comes from a consumer device that has RCA-style connectors. This means that sound structure devices will add 10 dB of gain to the input signal to get to the right input signal level of the sound structure device. There are also two more choices, mono balanced and stereo balanced. Those input types come from devices that have professional signal levels and don't need any additional input gain on the sound structure to get to the proper input signal level of the sound structure device. Even though we've selected a stereo program audio source, the stereo program audio channel is shown as a single signal. This is a feature of the sound structure design philosophy where we have the concept of virtual channels. The channel can represent either one or two underlying physical channels. In this way, one signal name can represent either mono or stereo physical channels. The program audio in this example is a stereo channel and therefore has two physical channels associated with it, the left channel and the right channel. We'll review this again when we look at how the system should be wired later in a different example. The graphic symbol next to the channel name shows that it's stereo rather than mono. Next, I'll select the PSTN telephony interface. This will automatically add both a phone input and a phone output channel. Finally, I'll select a video codec. In this example, I'll select a Polycom HDX video codec because that device not only provides the HD video experience, it will also connect directly to the sound structure device via the direct digital conference link interface. This means the connection from sound structure to the video codec does not require any analog inputs or outputs on the sound structure device. If we had chosen other types of video codecs, then they would have connected via analog inputs and outputs to the sound structure. By connecting to the video codec via the conference link interface, all the analog inputs of the sound structure device are available to be used with microphone signals. 
What you see when the HDX video codec is added is that there are multiple audio channels that are added to the system at the same time, including an HDX program in channel that corresponds to program audio such as VCR that is connected directly to the HDX video codec. On the video codec, if that program video input source is selected, for example, selecting the VCR, that audio would be sent over to sound structure to be used any way that you'd like to use it within the sound structure matrix. The next audio channel from the video codec you see is the HDX PSTN interface. This allows you to get the remote telco signals from the HDX POTS interface and use that audio directly with sound structure. This means if you're using an HDX video codec, you can use the HDX POTS interface directly to make and receive POTS calls through the HDX video system. The next audio channel that is added when an HDX codec is selected is the HDX user interface audio that the codec generates, including spoken digits and call progress information. Finally, there's the actual remote talker audio, the HDX video call in signal. This is the signal you typically think of when you want to get audio from a video codec. This includes all the remote talker audio. All these signals, except for the HDX PSTN interface, are stereo channels that are sent over conference link from the HDX video codec to sound structure. You can see from the graphic symbols next to the names which ones are stereo and which ones are mono. Having selected all the inputs I want from my system, I can click Next to get to step 2 and then start selecting some output signals. If you forget to add a channel, you can easily go back and add additional inputs to the system either now or even later after the project has been completed. That completes this example of selecting inputs for the project.